My name is Neil Tomba, and I'm a pastor from Dallas, Texas. For the last 18 years, I've dreamed of riding a bicycle across the United States. Today, our country feels more divided than ever, and I was determined to spend 33 days biking across America to learn how to talk to others about important things in a way that made them feel respected, heard, and valued. This is The Listening Road. After a day of much needed rest, two friends, Tim and Tony from Dallas, joined us for a few days. Our destination for the day was Foss, Oklahoma, 103 miles away. Right from the start, we rode into 33 mile an hour crosswinds. It took everything I had to concentrate on riding. I've never ridden in wind this strong before. And if I did, it was only for a half a mile, then I turned around and went home. I think Vila said she looked up a category one hurricane. And that's what we're in. After only five miles, I wondered if we needed to call it a day. Wes, when you feel like this is too dangerous, you make a call, okay? Help me make a call, okay? This is nuts. Okay, we just did 11 miles. We weren't getting enough upper body work. We are now. I think it's raining now also. What about the pace? Good? Perfect. Okay. When we could, we tried having the van block some wind for us. Is it better there? It's pretty good right here. Or Is it? I'll go up. I'll go up. Oh yeah, it's a little less windy there. About 11 a.m., we were passing through Mobiti, Texas, population 101, the oldest town in the Texas Panhandle. The wind continued to blow hard, pelting us with dust and sand. We rode all afternoon in the stormy weather and eventually stopped for supper at a pizza hut. You know, I was really, really excited. We knocked out 90 miles and I'm secretly still hoping for 100 if it's not dark when we get done eating. But um, it was nice to have some extra people and people stayed together and worked together. And that's why we got so much done today. So after dinner, we still had a few hours of light left and I really wanted to get our full 103 miles in for the day. All I said was, I'm going to keep riding for a while. Caroline and Wes immediately jumped on their bikes and kept going right along with me. As we knocked out the last 13 miles of our ride, I thought about how when any kind of road grows difficult, we can always find a million excuses not to finish. There were many times I was wanting to quit today, but I'm telling you, when we finally reached the campground, it felt so good to say we had gone the distance. We're at day 15 and a couple cool things happening today. We've got two good buddies, one on my rock rider cycling team, Richard Fuquay joining me today. Weich Walton, who's also a rock rider, who's joining us today and they're gonna do some pulling. My daughter Cherie is here today. But what I'm really excited about is this jersey. It says the Great Cycle Challenge USA Children's Cancer Research Fund. So today we're riding for Jaden. Now here's the cool part about all this. 
we're going to end in Edmond, Oklahoma tonight, and Jaden is going to be there with his dad and his mom, and we've got a few folks from Northwest coming, and we're going to have a party tonight and just encourage him. People have been praying for him, so here we go. Today our plan is to ride 118 miles from Foss to Edmond, Oklahoma. It was a beautiful morning as we headed out on smooth, flat roads through the Oklahoma heartland. It's fun to ride with such a large group and the mood among us was energetic and full of spirit. After riding for about 15 miles, we pulled over at a McDonald's for breakfast. After I had a quick bite to eat, I struck up a conversation with two men. Right up front, one declared himself to be a minister. And the other immediately said they were both conservatives with no apologies. I've just been absolutely amazed at the direction that our country is taking and, and so many things that uh, were unheard of in, in the day and time when I was young. And uh, you just feel like we're headed in the wrong direction as a nation. What's something specific about the wrong direction there? What is the thing you say, this is a problem? So abortion, homosexuality is a problem. The Bible says that that's not an acceptable lifestyle. And we, we're believers in the Bible, and uh, those are two big issues that I feel like uh, affect our nation in a negative way. Rick, you know, when you look at um, the problems Clint mentioned, how do you love them and how do you speak truth? How do you do that together? Usually, most. Uh, People have not experienced God's love and healing, and I usually step out into the healing part, and when they get touched by God, manifestation, it changes. But, but we have to speak truth, yeah. you know. The truth is we understand from the scriptures, and we can only share the truth. As I left that conversation, I felt very uneasy. Yes, truth is important. Also, we know Jesus came in grace and truth. My uneasiness wasn't just with them. I wonder how many times people have felt I didn't come with both grace and truth. As we were riding into a neighborhood, I saw a sign that read, Puppies for Sale. This was too good to pass up. The puppies were irresistible. Oh, look, there's a little puppy right at my foot. Hey, hey, hey. That one likes you. This one likes me. I might just bring this one home. How did you get into rehoming puppies? Well, we did it. We accidentally did. Uh, I'm expecting a baby right now, and then I came home and I had a pregnant puppy dog, so here we are. If, if somebody asks you, what do you value? What would you say you value? Family most. Family. Yeah. We don't really thrive on materialistic things. As you see, we, we're a standard family. You know, we live paycheck to paycheck, but we value each other mostly. What, what, what gave you the value for family? That's my husband. Kim. Oh, okay. That's my husband. He just got off work. Oh, really? Yeah, That's kind of cool. We just, we met, we both were married, we got together, and we both wanted the same things, love and family. And that's what we got. We got a house full of six kids, One, two, three, nine puppies, three, three dogs, wow. and two fish. Okay, so I, I, I'm going to ask you all to do me a favor today. So I'm going to give you $50. Maylee, do you have some friends who would really like a puppy? Yes, but they can't have dogs. They can't have dogs, okay. So can you find somebody that you'll give this puppy to as a present? Absolutely. Okay. Is it a girl or a boy? I don't or know. A girl. That's a girl. It's a girl, okay. We know that's, 
She has an S Okay, for her can name. I give her this a name? Go ahead. Neil. So my my name is Neil. My wife's name is Vila. So I want to name this puppy Neela. Neela. Because that's what I wanted to name my daughter. And my wife never would left me. Why are we laughing, y'all? Uh, so we're going to name this puppy Neela. So can I ask uh, one more question? You have time. Do you all have anybody in your life that talks to you about spiritual things, faith, God, any of that? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, we have several people. Do you? Who, yeah. who, who is that? Well, Sherry, Sherris. Who's Sherris? She is a leader of my woman's group at church. Oh, really? Yes. She has really brought us in. Well, you say she brought you in. So were you not going before well, that? We were going, but periodically. And she just, she's just a really good friend of ours. And she's just a light of our life. You know, when we see her, it's always a good day. So, um, you know, when you think about Jesus, what do you think about? What comes to your mind? Eternal life. Eternal life that he gave you, eternal life? Happiness, joy, faith. Everybody here, Robert, how about you? I got faith in the Lord. Wow. That's how I made it home. Daughter, a day of faith. A day of faith. Yes. Wow. Her name's Adea, and her middle name's Ruby Faith. Mm. Anything else? Uh, yeah, just uh, to have faith in every day and believe in yourself and everything that you do. Mm. Everything, no matter what it is. I like you, lady. You're bold. <laughs> Y'all, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Blessings on y'all. Y'all, this is so fun. My daughter, Cherie, regularly rides two to 300 miles per week. She knows how to ride smoothly and with consistent power. She makes a good leader of the pack. With the extra cyclist helping us draft, we were now picking up our pace. We rode all the way into Edmond, 118 miles. Overall, it had been a good day. A couple carloads of people had driven up from Dallas for the party for Jaden but there was one important person missing. <laughs> I'm dealing with a little disappointment because um, tonight I was really hoping to celebrate and to encourage Jaden, a little seven-year-old boy with cancer. And he, because of his treatment, was too sick to come tonight. Hi, you guys. Look at y'all, man. We decided to still have the party in Jaden's honor, to take pictures, write notes, and send him and his family some encouragement. I had a really hard time knowing that Jaden couldn't make the car ride and enjoyed that dinner with us. God, why do these things happen? And I was reminded again that I was going out not to give people all the answers, but to listen and talk about where Jesus can show up even in the midst of brokenness. The next morning, as we were checking out of the hotel, a young woman named Rachel was working the front desk and was up for talking. Rachel, you're passionate about? Weirdly, about my parents' business. Okay. It's called Dogtopia of Edmonds. It's a refashioned doggy daycare. Do you know why you're passionate about your parents' business? What, what, what is it for you? I think because I've always loved dogs. Okay. Always have, always will. But then I can go and visit my parents and go and see my dad working a room. I can look on their webcams and see him interacting and seeing him lead and he's happy and my mom is happy and they feel fulfilled. And I think even though I'm their kid, I'm an adult as well and I can see that as something I want in my life and learn from them and grow in that way. So there's something really attractive when somebody is going after their passion, whether it's your parents yeah. or not, and it draws people in. It does. Yeah. Does faith, the spirituality, any of that play any role for you in all of this? Yes. Tell me about that. My parents are very even with all of the work that they do, my mom still takes time every day, does her Bible study, sits down, really? texts all her kids saying, don't call me, I know you love me, don't call me. I'm doing my wow. Bible study, I'm doing my homework. And a lot of it when they're starting out and getting clientele is so built on faith. And I think everything happens for a reason. 
I want to have that as well, where I can still take a, a chunk out of my day to just kind of sit down, breathe, and meditate and think about uh -huh. what brought me to this place. There's something bigger out there than just us. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, plays a factor into it. It's awesome you worked at that front desk. I want you to know. <laughs> it's I really like cool. People. You are a blessing to people. Hey, Rachel. Thank you, guys. Thank you. As I left with our riders, I felt a strange combination of both excitement and exhaustion. On the schedule for today is a 107 mile ride from Edmond, Oklahoma to Tulsa. One thing to know about me is that I have bad allergies. And for some reason today, my allergies became really bad. Something hung thick in the air, maybe pollen from trees or grass, and at eight miles in, I could hardly see, and eventually I had to stop. My eyes were on fire. I was wondering how I was going to continue the ride. After flushing my eyes and borrowing Cherie's tinted glasses, I pushed myself to keep going. After a while, we reached a roadside produce stand near Chandler, Oklahoma. As we were leaving, I had an idea. Maybe I could close one eye and give it a rest while I continued to ride with one eye open. Sheree, this one, just like put it across here like this. Oh, I put that piece in your hair. Thank I'm you. Not very good at this. You're not doing good at all. <laughs> okay, come on. There we go. Give this eye a break and then we'll give the, we'll switch it later. Okay. okay. Everybody looked at me like I was crazy, but I hopped on my bike anyway and started riding. came into Tulsa a few hours later, Shri and I were riding next to each other. We came to Crybaby Hill, a section of the famous Tulsa Tough Bicycle Race. This was too good of an opportunity to pass up. The race was on. So Cherie <laughs> wanted us to go up Crybaby Hill. No, no. What? I don't, what? You took the whole team there? No, 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 no. Cherie wanted us to go up Crybaby Hill. She wanted to kind of show her stuff. And the, the first annual Dad Against Daughter Prime Crybaby Hill. I didn't Hill. know it was a race. Do? What, wait, wait, I she didn't know, know it was a race. Who won? Oh. We, yeah, we said oh, we didn't want to race. I said we're not racing, we're just oh, riding up yeah. it. Then well then why when I was up there in the front there was one person in the back and two people were away from the whole other group. I was, was just, the other person. I was just riding up it with Caroline and then all of a sudden you started attacking with White. After Wes blocked me. We were not racing. Okay, well I think that answers his own race. <laughs> oh. The next morning I was invited to speak at a small Christian businessman's prayer breakfast. We have a unique way that God wants us to bring Jesus into the world. Your story matters, and the place God has you matters. Do you have some tips for us, like we uh, 
talking to people about Jesus? Yeah. My first tip is this. You ask questions, be curious. Be curious about people's story. How's your family? You got grandkids? Tell me about your grandkids. How are they doing? What's going on? And you know, I, 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 sometimes people shut me down, but I often say this, how can I pray for you? And nine out of 10 times, people are open to be praying for them. And here's the biggest thing, y'all. In a country where we're used to looking at each other like this, and it, this is almost a confrontive position, right? So I'm looking where whenever I'm talking to somebody, how can I first affirm and feel like I'm coming alongside of them? And I learned this, you guys, actually from riding bikes. Because when you're riding bikes, you're side by side. So guys, I wanted to say something about this because God has convicted me about this more than ever on this trip. I really need to be gentle with people and their stories. Because of the time spent at this breakfast, the riders and I didn't get on our bikes until almost 10 a.m. I'm ready to make some wrong turns today. We haven't made any in the last two days. I think we need one today. Here we go. See ya. We plan to touch three states today, riding 100 miles from Tulsa, Oklahoma, passing through Kansas to Joplin, Missouri. As we rode through a small town, I saw a man come out of a store carrying a fishing pole with his son. So I pulled over to talk. His name was Joseph and his son was Nathan. Do you work here in town? I'm a full-time dad. Full-time dad, good for you, taking care of your son, yes. man. That's awesome. And Joseph, um, when, how did you develop a passion for fishing? My grandpa. Tell me something about your grandpa. He used to take me catfishing when I was younger and <laughs> Spin them. Well, he start, actually he started me off on a cane pole. Did That's he really? He learned how. Nice. He, here in town, in yeah. Chelsea? Same river? Uh, probably, yeah. So, Joseph, what, um, what, tell me something that's just, like, important to you. Faith. Really? God, yep. Tell me about that. What does that mean for you guys? Forgiveness. You know, he made the ultimate price for us. Mm, so you're yeah. talking about Jesus. Yeah. So, Joseph, tell me this. How does Jesus make a real difference in your life today, or maybe something he's changed in your life? Well, in the last four years, I got into some trouble. Um, I had problems with substance abuse. Wow. And through the process of recovery, I went into subrate recovery, became a leadership on that. Wow. That, um, <laughs> three weeks, I graduate from drug court, and I'm going to keep it going. <laughs> Yeah. That's awesome, <laughs> yeah. dude. Wow. We're here to celebrate with you today. Whoa. Every day celebrate recovery. Tell me something that has been um, like a core thing you learned at Celebrate Recovery. Oh, a core. Renew daily. Just waking up every day and thanking God. That's been a real core for me. Wow. Yeah. I felt encouraged not only by the conversation we just had, but also by the conversations that had taken place between Joseph and others long before I'd ever arrived. Twenty minutes later, we reached the town of Benita and pulled up at a cafe that seemed like a great place to eat. While waiting for my food, I struck up a conversation with Larry. Okay, tell him, just ignore that. Yeah. Awesome. You know that little button on the side? You just I'll, pop that. Hey, I'm supposed to home. I'm not from California. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that shit. Larry, like when you think about our country, what concerns you the most? Just anything, or our world, what's, what's your biggest concern? Abortion. Abortion. That bothers me worse than just about anything. Yeah. It's wrong. I don't change my mind like Biden does. 
I stay the same, whether it's you, whether it's a cattle man that brought all his cattle to town, got lots of money. Don't make any difference. You're consistent. I, I don't tell them what I think. Wow. And that's the way I feel about it. Thank you for sharing with us. Look at that. That looks good, doesn't it? To have those fajitas. I asked those cowboys over there a while ago if there, if theirs was chicken. They weren't eating chicken, were they? Man. I, I was embarrassed for them. I was that you guys. That was y'all. Well, uh, but now listen, you know when people. When people do that to us, I say, oh, I think they were just being nice cheering us on. They were. Okay. <laughs> After lunch, I introduced myself to the Cowboys. Tell me what you guys do. You don't have that much film. You okay. Just my hands and okay. <laughs> Give us a little quick. No, sir, Marcelino. <laughs> you can see my boots. Uh, Marcelino's here from Idaho applying for a job. Okay. He, uh, he works on a ranch. Lance here is a custom bit and spur maker. He's 21 years old, but he also works on the ranch. Wow. I, you name it, I do it. I have a construction company. I sell real estate. I run cow. Whoa. I shoot the shit with guys like you. Nice. If, if, if somebody asks you, what's important to you? Hair is pretty hot. Hair. Oxygen. You don't agree? Oxygen's pretty hot. I get it. I get it. Um, okay, so we got to have some oxygen to live. I say family and religion. Family and religion. It's pretty high up there. It's pretty high up. What's that? Being happy. Well, how did you get the value of family? Love. Love. <laughs> Love mine, every day. mine was handed down from generation after generation. Really? You know, well, my family believes that your family comes first no matter what, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. That's uh, right. Now, we have bad in our family, you know, just like everybody else does. But Not you know. perfect. Um, so when y'all say religion, what does that mean? Like, just for y'all? Life. <laughs> what us, you know, to me, uh, there's a higher power up there who's in charge, you know, and, you know, someday hopefully you get to meet him and, and not the other one, you know. What do you call that higher power for you? God. 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 Okay. Jesus. God. Jesus. Yeah. And, and, and if somebody asks you, who is Jesus, what would you say? Son of God. Son of God. Son of God. The one that okay. sacrificed everything. I think that God is probably, for me, he's the most important. Wow. Like, I'm impressed that you guys, when somebody asks you what's important, faith and religion. I'm impressed when you say, hey, we believe in Jesus and da 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 da. And so many people aren't even willing to say that, what they think about. So that, you know, if you don't want to know what a cowboy thinks, don't ask him. You know, I love that, though. Okay. That, you know, we, we just about jumped somebody's butt while ago for not keeping the door shut. <laughs> you know, we it. put up with flies and heat all day. We like to come in here out of the flies and <laughs> sit in the cool for a little while. Hey, be yeah. yourself is what you do best. Can't be be your, your, hey, there, you get that? <laughs> be yourself is what you do best. Nice to meet you. Thank y'all. Thank you, guys. Yes, and you said the last best forgiveness. If the whole world could just find forgiveness in the heart, it would be a better, a better place. If the, forgiveness. If the whole world could find forgiveness in their heart. Amen. Thanks, Marcelino. Yeah, thank you. As we went outside, Marcelino followed us out and asked Caroline if he could ride her bike. You can ride a horse, you ought to be able to ride a bike. And now those are p special pedals, but that's okay, you'll be able to do it. It's not gonna buck me off. It will, it might, it might. Yeah, cowboy, look at that, man, ride a painted pony. Oh, jeez. I don't know how you guys do it. I, that whole seat, I'd rather be on a saddle. If you put a saddle up here, I might. <laughs> <laughs> The riders and I got on our bikes again and rode all afternoon. Our group got smaller once we reached Miami, Oklahoma, as the locals say. And as we rode through, I stopped and introduced myself to three guys out in a park playing Pokemon Go. Their names were Dakota, Daniel, and Dalton. Tell me just something that's important to y'all. You say, if somebody got to know you, they'd say, this is something that's important to me. Friends and family. Friends and family. Yeah. My children. Your children. 
That's a good true. thing, Dad. <laughs> Video games, that's it. Video games. Hey, that's Fire okay. Friends, now, anybody you talk to about spiritual things? Not anymore. I grew up, my dad was a preacher. Uh, he's preached all over the place. Really? Uh, so I grew up dealing with that, but other than that, I don't talk to him anymore mm -hmm. about it. So, okay, I want to ask you a question. You said I grew up dealing with that. Is uh, that a good thing or a bad thing? It's okay either way. I was, I was say, I personally don't believe, but it's mm -hmm. something that we just had to do. Yeah. He was 18 and then he gave us a choice, but... Good for him. There's more scientific proof about evolution than there uh -huh. is uh, someone making us. Yeah. Don't know it exists, so... How about you, man? I grew up with him, too, and I, I was forced to go to church when I had to stay the night with him and I don't know kind of like forcing me to do it was like the burner on it like yeah I, again I don't see any actual proof of there mm -hmm. being a God or anything not um, the thing you said about maybe God not enough proof seriously what what would you think God would have to do to make you say oh yeah I really believe I, I can believe have an angel come and be like hey he's real and have wings and fly off. I, I'd want him to just make a corporeal form and just spawn in right there and tell us and then just straight disappear, fly off something. Yeah, same. I would just want to see like a visual representation of him or something of that sort. I wouldn't ask for anything. I feel like my life's already kind of complete. Uh -huh. So, yeah, if we figured out that he was real, you wouldn't really want to ask for anything. You'd want yeah. to change your ways. You know, the whole deal about Jesus is that God showed up in corporeal form. Yeah. Part of the whole message of Jesus was, and he kept saying it really clearly, I am God. And I just wonder if like we could go back into that time, if that might be the proof. Yeah, I, I if someone asked me what superpower you could have and stuff, I always say, time travel me because too dude i want to go back and see like dinosaurs like like no one really knows if they had feathers or or yeah lizard scales or even jesus see what he did and everything like just well i just want to see and observe everything here's just something to chew on you know the bible actually like i think when i when you could come to it totally fresh and just say Hey, I'm not thinking about my parents. I'm not thinking about, you know, the church I grew up in, but just to be able to say, hey, could this be kind of my opportunity to time travel? And I, and I would just have to know for sure, did I trust the book? You know, there, so there's a whole big nother question, you know, but I, did I trust it because there are things like, at least for me that I say, I think I believe in so-and-so's life like pick somebody famous not jesus somebody famous um that you'd like to time travel and talk to uh, definitely one of the uh emperors or something like that over yeah like caesar maybe yeah yes. here's something interesting we know some things about caesar you guys knew his name and there's something that we quote unquote we 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 all Is that uh, your friends? No. <laughs> Dude, that, this is Miami. Miami. Yeah. That's awesome. We're stepping direct show. Oh, really? Everyone likes to show off their vehicles here. So, oh, you know, we all believe in Caesar. Why do we believe in him? Because there were some people in the past who wrote about him and said they knew him. Anyway, yeah. something to think about. As we were coming to the end of the day, I was amazed at the number of conversations I had and all the different people I met. I also was aware I felt fear before entering into those conversations. But when I stepped forward with just a bit of courage, we were just guys hanging out over breakfast. We were fathers talking about fishing. We were guys sharing laughs at a cafe and friends talking about time travel in a park. Sometimes it takes just a little courage to initiate and then patience to listen.